guy from Lagos, Nigeria. Please let's know where you're joining us in the chat box uh, across the globe. Let's know where you're joining us from. Yes, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Uh, I can see Alero on the call. Thank you for joining, uh, Eunice. Thank you for joining us uh, this evening. K, K Osa, thank you so much for joining us. We are so excited to have you. Uh, Sheon T.O., uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're trying to see uh, we can get as much people as possible to join this session. It's promised to be very, very enlightening quite a specific session, I will be, uh, you know, explaining to you uh, some of the key insights about uh, the prospects of moving abroad, essentially. Welcome, welcome to this evening's webinar. Uh, once again, I just want to remind us uh, what the topic of this evening's webinar is, essentially. Uh, we'll be discussing on the topic, save time and money, getting green cards and work permits as a high achieving professional. I'm going to take that again. Save time and money getting green cards and work permits as a high achieving professional. This is a very, very important conversation at this material time that funders, entrepreneurs, business owners, uh, those who are looking towards giving their businesses global visibility and expansion. You know, this is a conversation that will be so very uh, dear to their hearts. And I'm sure Many of us are on this call this evening because of how important this conversation is uh, this evening. Again, the topic is save time and money, getting green cards and work permits as a high achieving uh, professional. And that's what we'll be talking about uh, this evening. I can see quite a lot of people joining the call. Uh, I see a lot of new people, new faces already on the call. Thank you so much for joining. We're just trying to wait a few minutes uh, before we set the ball rolling. Uh, we're expecting more people to join. Please do want to share the link to this webinar. Share to your friends, your loved ones, your business partners, uh, your colleagues at work who should listen to this uh, very, very important conversation uh, this evening. Once again, my name is Ifeoluwa Aria Gbajale, the partnership and communications team here at University, and I'm going to be your host for this webinar session. Like I said earlier, we have amazing individuals that will be resource persons uh, for this webinar, and I can't wait to bring them up to, you know, to share their insight and engage you on this very, very important conversation uh, this evening. Please do well to share in the chat box where you are joining us from uh, across the globe. I'm reaching you live from Lagos, Nigeria, and I'm sure we have quite a lot of people that have come from both, both within Nigeria and outside Nigeria right on this call. And we are super, super excited to have you on this call. Uh, thank you so much for joining right on time. Uh, just uh, as a point of information, uh, this is jointly hosted by Vesti and the Premier Business Network. This is jointly hosted by Vesti and the Premier Business Network. And I must say that this has stemmed from a partnership that's uh, been sealed between Vesti and the Premier Business Network, essentially uh, uh, with the PBN. Uh, uh, Vesti has partnered with the PBN as one of the global business networks to be able to add value to members of this uh, network, essentially. The collaboration is essentially for uh, you know, accomplished PBM members uh, with expert guidance through uh, the often complex immigration process. We know how messy the immigration process is, uh, and uh, there are many funders and entrepreneurs right now looking to unlocking, you know, exciting global career opportunities. And that's why Vesti has partnered with the PBN network to be able to, you know, get closer to members of these communities and also share some of the valuable information and resources that can help them, you know, access global career opportunities, global visibility, global expansion, as the case may be. And we are so excited because PBN is a very prestigious network of business leaders across the globe that boasts of a community that perfectly aligns, uh, you know, with the career, with the criteria of these extraordinary ability visas, green cards, and their equivalents in various countries that we are talking to founders and entrepreneurs about. Our CEO, Ulushola Amazon, is so excited about this. And uh, uh, that's why we have partnered with the PBN Network, uh, which is top on our list of 
global business networks that we continue to you know establish relationship with i want to welcome you to this webinar if this is your first time of coming in contact with vesti i want to warmly welcome you uh this is vesti uh, vesti is a migration fintech company we are the preferred provider of legal and financial services for immigrants from the moment that you decide that you want to move from a source country to a destination country and every moment after. Essentially, we are there to hold you through the process. There are two fundamental problems that Vesti is solving within the ecosystem. There's a messy immigration right now, and there's also the worst financial mobility. And Vesti is solving this problem by developing a proprietary tool uh, that you know, seeks to bring together migration pathways on one hand and the financial services together on, one, on the other hand, together on one platform, which is the Vesti Hub. And uh, we have continued to serve amazing individuals, amazing immigrants that are moving from different source countries to destination countries. And uh, we are excited to be engaging with the PBN network uh, to be able to you know, bring our services closer to people that truly, truly need uh, uh, information about extraordinary ability visas, you know, how to save money and save time in accessing green card opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you on the final note to this webinar. And like I mentioned earlier, this is a very important conversation we are having today. And the topic again is save time and money. Save time and money getting green cards and work permits as a high achieving professional. At this time, I want to bring on board my resource uh, persons that will be joining me for this webinar. I'm not just going to be the only one talking to you this evening. Uh, I have amazing individuals that will be joining me uh, for this session this evening. Uh, just before I introduce them, I want to also uh, give some housekeeping rules. Please do well to drop uh, your location where you're joining us from. We'd like to know. Also, if you have questions to ask our resource persons, uh, please do well to drop your question in the chat box uh, during the Q&A segment. We'll be able to take some of your questions. Uh, we're trying to take everything as much as time permits us. So we'll be able to answer those questions and be able to give you those insights that you uh, look forward to getting from this session. Once again, welcome to this webinar. The first uh, speaker I'll be bringing on board, I'll be introducing it to us this evening, is no other person than uh, an amazing individual, one of our senior uh, leadership members here at Vesti, uh, Ms. Olubumi Opadoi. She's a senior business and migration analyst at Vesti. Please, uh, Ms. Olubumi Opadoi, please say hello to our wonderful listening audience this afternoon. All right, thank you, Ife. Good evening, everyone, and you're welcome to this very, very insightful session. My name is Olubumi Opadoi, as Ife has said, and I'm the um, Senior Business and Migration Analyst at Vesti. You're welcome to this session. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Olubumi. Uh, I can't wait to hear some of those insights uh, that I've heard you speak about uh, so many times. Uh, and it's such a privilege to also hear you talk about this important information to members of the Premium Business Network and, of course, other professionals that are on this call that are looking forward to getting valuable information on this uh, or in respect to this conversation. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the next uh, resource person speaker I'll be bringing on board who will also be speaking to us and who is also uh, the number one member of the Premier Business Network globally is no other person than Mr. Bola Lawa. Please say hello to our wonderful uh, listening audience this afternoon. Well, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, my name is Bola. Uh, I run Premier Business Network. I been around technology and startups for about eight years now. Um, it's an exciting topic. Um, cool thing about this is uh, all the skills and experience that you've got to use to create value uh, is valuable when you, when you want to uh, market yourself or sell yourself in, in front of whoever is making a decision as regards to um, you my great thing is that all the work you've done uh, shows the value that you can bring when you move to another country. Uh, and um, it's, it's exciting to partner with with Vesti uh, on this and have uh, a lot of our members who definitely qualify. Uh, that, that's your market. Uh, our, our, our members are your market, really. And uh, it's, it's glad to have some of them here to come here about 
what Vesta is doing and how Vesta is making it easy. So happy to be here. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Bolala. Wow, amazing. Um, you said it. Uh, members of the Premier Business Network, of course, are uh, many, if not all of them, qualify for some, uh, for most all, all these uh, special talent visas, the extraordinary ability visas, the visas that typically enable uh, funders and entrepreneurs to be able to access global opportunities, to be able to give their businesses the global visibility and expansion that these uh, businesses and the thriving ecosystem truly deserves. I want to welcome you again. Thank you for creating the time to join us on this webinar to you know chime in and also uh, lend your voice to this uh, important conversation at this material time. Uh, the, the last was not the least a speaker that will also be introducing to us, uh, who, who will be joining us much later on, uh, is uh, Mr. Olushola Amuso, is the co-founder and CEO of Vesti, is a visionary, and uh, he is also uh, going to be sharing his story and sharing some insights about uh, the moving abroad and how this is possible and how you as a founder and entrepreneur can leverage this opportunity to give your business uh, the visibility and uh, expansion that it truly deserves and uh, we're excited to you know have you join us on this session please as we start this uh, webinar uh, please do want to share the link to your friends your colleagues uh, your partners business partners associates uh, for them to join this session uh, we're talking about a very very important uh, topic and uh, it promises to be very very enlightening and valuable uh, again, the topic is save time and money, getting green cards and work permits as a high achieving a professional. And I'm going to be starting on these notes uh, this evening, you know, asking this question. I want to start with uh, Mr. Lubumi or Padui uh, on this very, very uh, first question that we'll be asking. Uh, uh, we're talking about saving time and money getting green cards and work permits as I achieve a professional. I, and we already know that members of the PBN network and or even other uh, professionals on this call, they are, you know, the, those who are qualified for these uh, special talent visas, the extraordinary ability visas. And uh, I just want to ask, uh, could you please give some insight about what uh, the green cards are, what the work permits are, uh, and give some kind of, uh, can you set the context for, this conversation in respect to green cards, work permits, and why it's so important for high achieving professionals to leverage uh, these opportunities, essentially. Mr. Lubumi, please, you have the floor. Please, can you hear me? Yes, please, loud and clear. Oh, thank you. So please, can you take the question again? Because I think it was breaking in my head. All right, thank you so much. So I was saying uh, we have members of the PBN network here and even other okay. professionals uh, a, uh, on this call. And they are, right. perhaps this is the first time they're hearing about green cards. Uh, they're hearing about work permits and they just want to get some sort, sort of context about what is it all about? Uh, like, uh, can you just break it down? What does it mean to have a green card? What are work permits? And uh, why is it so important for professionals to leverage these opportunities? Okay, so I think I would start with um, the work permit while I move on to the green card and its importance to professionals. Good evening once again. Um, um, work permits. Work permit simply means um, it is it is um, an allowance, more like an issuance to a professional to work professionally in a country. Now I will be using the United States as the context here. So if you have a work permit, if, if you're on a work permit visa, it simply means while you're in that particular country, you are allowed to seek employment or to, to work professionally in your industry or in your field in the United States. It's yes for and um the the only thing about the work permit and the green card which I will still come to is that the work permit only allows you to work legally in the United States for a particular period of time. Now it is a pathway to a green card, but it is not a green card. That will lead me to the green card. Now the green card simply means um is more like a a personal a, a permanent residency card. So the, the, the green card itself allows you to work legally 
in that country as a resident. So while the work permit only allows you to work professionally in the US for a particular period of time, this allows you to work um, in the country as a resident. And you also have, um, you have entitlement to all of the beneficiaries that uh, a resident gets either professionally for the family, for the kids, you know, going to school, um, access for the spouse to work and all of that. Now, what is the benefit of the green card or the work permit to a professional? It's more like, as we put it, investing your global passport. It gives you a, a global leverage. Imagine you have access to work professionally or internationally. I've had to work with individuals who, who had to come work on, who had to go on this particular work visas, or some of them eventually go for green cards because they want international um, job opportunities. And there are a lot of multinationals that it is more of a leverage for you when you have these visas. You have a lot more job opportunities opportunities now that is for professionals however if you're running if you have your if you're the ceo the the ceo of your own company it gives you a global leverage and also to um, to employ labor within your own company you are allowed to migrate in that company into that country that's the united states you're allowed to go in with your entire family and you are also allowed to employ labor now, it depends on which particular green card you're coming on. If you're coming on the EB1, of course, or over a period of time after you adjust your status, yes, you will be able to also employ labor. However, if you're coming on the national interest waiver, if you're working with us, we'll be able to advise you on how you, you can become um, an employer of labor. And another part of being um, a recipient of the global passport is there is no end to the grants and the funding um, Cap, um, for the funding capacities that you, that you can get. There are a lot of people that they, they apply for grants, they apply for um, venture capitalist funding, and they don't get them just because they do not have this particular global passport. They don't have visas. I've seen a lot of pitch decks. I can, I can, I can tell you, and they tell you, okay, what's your global passport? And they're unable to state that, okay, this is where this is where I am at. This is where I'm looking at, and this is how I am aiming to get at it. And this allows a lot of funders to actually decline funding these people. But if you are on this particular green card um, pathway, it allows you access to a lot of funding um, opportunities. So that's okay. going to be uh, the limit I'm going to be talking about. So when we get into it, all right. Um, talking uh, thank about you, uh, what Olubumi, that for that. Years. I think that gives us a sort of context about it okay. and uh, understanding about what uh, the distinction between the green card itself and the work permit. Uh, thank you so much for giving such uh, clarity to it. And of course, of funders, they can be employers of labor, not just even uh, opportunities for themselves, for their spouses and children, and uh, even uh, a part towards citizenship in the US, as the case may be. Uh, that's quite instructive to note. Uh, I am aware that there are some, some of us on this call that perhaps we don't even know uh, we have just had you talk about the green card and the work permits right now, and we've just had you talk about the importance of these, and we're wondering what are those key steps towards, you know, attaining or achieving these, perhaps in the short term, in the midterm, or in the long term. Could you please just give us some, uh, walk us through uh, the key steps in the green card and work permit application processes that professionals should be aware of? Amazing. Thank you. Thank you for that question. The first step you want to, um, key step you want to take note of is determining your eligibility. Because these are particular visa types. These are pathways that have their own criteria. They have their own, um, they have all of the criteria, the prerequisites that qualifies you to be um, a global or a professional that is trying to get onto the green card or work permit. So you need to determine your eligibility. Now, if you're determining your eligibility for um, the green card or the work permit, one of the first things you want to ask is how many years do you have 
in the industry. I'll be using the least, which is three years in whatever industry you might have been in. So let's say you at least you've been in that particular industry for up to three years. You want to determine what industry do I belong to? Maybe sciences, education, am I in business, am I in arts, am I in media, TV, am I in radio, am I an athlete, am I just, you know, a star? Because there are there are there are particular visa pathways that are for the at least the world record holders. And there are some that are for professionals. There are some that are for the academias. So you want to know how you meet each of this eligibility criteria. And if it's either there are two categories of people, it's either you readily meet it right now and you're well documented or you are getting ready to be documented. So the first thing you want to know is um, have you do you um have you ever authored a book before? That's the first criteria. I'm taking them in no particular order. Have you ever authored a book? Have you co-authored a book with anyone before? If you have, that is one of the eligibility criteria. Number two, do you have an advanced degree? If you have an advanced degree, a master's, uh, a master's degree order that uh, might actually qualify you. Number two, do you have, um, have you judged the work of others? Have you written the foreword of a book? Has anyone, you know, brought their book to you and tell you, please, can you help me write the foreword? Has anyone um, come to you to write their appraisals? Quite a number of times. If you have evidences of all of this, of course, that qualifies you for um, the green card. Do you belong to memberships like um, associations? How many associations? The more the merrier. Are you part of the JCI? Are you part of the international the international chambers of commerce? Do you belong to the Forbes Council? All of these memberships are actually um, they count. Do you have you published your works in 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 Nigeria in any of the local journals or international journals? Being the New York Times, have you used the Business Day, the Vanguard, um, the the Tribunes? Have have you have you published any of your works there? Um, do you have you also received nationally or internationally recognized prizes? If you have received the Nobel laureate, be it within your organization or outside of your organization, of course, it also counts for something. Have you participated on a panel? And I think the last time we had this particular um, webinar, I mentioned the growth conference. Everyone that was on a panel. Um, during the conference, you know, could you use that as an evidence, be it the panelists or the moderators? So participation on the panels, uh, however much you have, if you have one, if you have two of them, of course, they also count as an evidence. Are you employed in a critical capacity? Are you the CEO, the CTO, the CFO, or are you the head of your department? Are you in a supervisory role? Now it is different um, for in the in the tech ecosystem, you have you know more of the CTOs, the CFOs. However, if you look at the multinationals, you see them they, they just belong belong to their managers of particular divisions. They move from departments to department. I'm talking about people who have worked in Shell, people who have worked in Chevron, or you look at our banking franchises, the way they have um, the managers of very different. So if you're in a managerial role or a top role, that also counts as an evidence. Now, if you're thinking of um, the EB2 NIW pathway, you can also um, add this. If you have um, if you have patents, let's say you are in the health industry, whatever job, be it um, if you're if you're a lawyer, any any particular industry that has patents that requires patent or licensing to actually practice in another country, you know you also need to have the license to practice in that country that you're coming into. Now, the first question is, do you need to meet all of this criteria? The US requires that you actually meet three of this particular criteria. So if you have any three of this particular eight criteria that I have listed, then of course you qualify to be, um, to be called a uh, a professional or a global professional. You have what it takes. However, does that qualify that you will be approved altogether? No. So while a lot of people, we've asked them until I have this, I have that, then it depends on how overwhelming this evidence is. How many published articles do you have? We've had people that they just have one or two. It is only when you're working with professionals to tell you, okay, having one or two would not suffice. You need to have a minimum number of this. Um, also, if you are... Uh, Aside being employed in critical capacity, what is your um, 
evidence of a high salary. Now, a lot of people ask questions when we get to evidence of a high salary or other remuneration. Do I need to show my pay slip or do I need it by proof of funds? The United States would never ask you for proof of funds. They just want to know that you are employed in critical capacity. And being employed in critical capacity simply means that you are going to be paid um, in alliance to um, how critically employed you are. So what is the minimum or what is the average that is expected for a Nigerian? We take it country by country. What is expected as a median salary for a Ghanaian is different from what is expected from a Kenyan or a Zambian in all of the countries that we operate. But right now I'll be using um, our country here where we're domiciled, Nigeria. As long as you earn um, above 450,000 Naira, you're seen as an high earning individual. Now, how do you evidence this? If you are paid a salary, you can evidence this by your pay slips. However, if you are the CEO, the CFO, you build your business, um, you're an entrepreneur, you can also evidence this by contracts, which um, you know were awarded to you and were duly signed. So we do not need your bank statement or any of that, as long as we can get this um, contract duly signed on the day they were signed and the, rem the remuneration that you're going to be getting is well stated on that contract. It suffices as an evidence. Do you need to meet all of this? No, you do not need to meet all of this. You need to meet a minimum of three. And we also work with um, legal attorneys. I like to brag a lot by saying I work with the best of the best at Vesti. And um, they're able to work with you to overwhelmingly qualify for these particular visa types. Now, the, the best way you can also determine your eligibility, Vesti has come up with what we call a pre-qualification test to know if you qualify for any of these particular visa types. The visa types are the O1 visa, the EB1 visa, and the EB2 NIW visa. I'll be breaking them. Now, the O1 visa is what you call a work permit visa, valid for just three years and renewable every year after that. You also need to meet a minimum of three requirements and we're able to work with you to meet with about five or six of them so you are overwhelmingly qualified when this petition is being submitted. Valid for three years and after which you can migrate onto um, a more permanent pathway. The EB1 visa is also a green card. It is a green card valid for 10 years, um, after which the initial three to five years you can migrate onto citizenship if um, you would like that. The EB2 NIW is quite different because that's a lot more academy based. And that was why I had to add that if you have an advanced degree and um, for the EB2 NIW, we always advise, we, we ask just two questions. If you have an advanced degree and you have up to 10 years of work experience, then this qualifies you for this particular visa type. The reason why we make this is because if you have an advanced degree, of course, you have your dissertations written, you have the thesis um, you've, you've, you've worked on while you were um, studying for this particular master's, you have your research works done, and you also have, you might also have citations. All of this counts as evidences for advanced degree, and they also help to hate this particular petition writing. Then when it comes to the extraordinary ability area, that is where we come to the recommendations. Recommendation letters dating up to at least five to 10 years of you being in that particular field. And this can only be evidenced by the number of recommendations you are able to provide you know, from significant individuals, not just any recommendations, significant individuals within this particular field. And also you need to meet at least three or, uh, or more of the initial um, criteria that I listed. Now that is knowing your eligibility or determining your eligibility. After you have determined that you are eligible, the best thing I would advise, please work with a legal professional work with a legal professional. Um, we have had so many, so many cases of this went wrong. I went to do this application. This was what happened. So before you start gathering evidence and you have determined that you're eligible, please work with a legal professional because you can never undermine or underestimate the advice of a legal professional. After you've got you working with a legal professional, I would advise, advise Vesti here, then you begin your document gathering phase.
a lot of document gathering. There are a lot of um, what we call irrelevant evidences, as much as they are part of um, what is needed for the particular pathway, we call them irrelevant um, evidences. You want to know what evidence is relevant to the petition and what is irrelevant. Do not forget that there's going to be a classification or a narration to which your petition will be filed. So you want to know that every evidence is towards your classification or the narration to which your petition will be filed. And after you work with um, a legal profession, someone who knows their audience and has, um, you know, the success story, Vesti here, I would advise. Then after the document gathering, you submit. Mm -hmm. Only then will you begin to now um, start to know if you want to do a premium processing so that you can get your response on time or not. After you get the response, which mostly I Vesti, we get an approval. You want to know if you'll be going through your consular processing or adjusting your status to a, a permanent resident within the US. And then if you're going through the consular processing, then you begin the guidance on your biometrics, uh, or if you're adjusting your status, then you begin to know, you know, how to fill your forms, how to submit all of your medicals and uh, all of that. So that's it about the steps. All right, thank you so much, uh, Bumi. Uh, thank you so much, uh, quite very, very, uh, uh, expansive conversation there, quite expository. Uh, thank you so much. You see, I, I could see you talking about the uh, the legal team at Vesti uh, uh, and how uh, they are so hands on about, you know, helping and managing the cases of uh, clients, making sure that they get uh, valued and they are being and held all through the process, like so much, so much that the team is doing. And uh, I'm so incredibly proud of the, uh, the legal team, uh, the immigration lawyers at Vesti doing amazing work, you know, helping uh, uh, clients to file uh, to position for these uh, visas that you've talked about. And of course, I, I also love how you were able to, you know, go into the nitty gritty of the different steps that uh, qualifies professionals, high achieving professionals for these visa types, uh, like if you are published, you know, in major media, you can also, uh, you hold a critical role, you have evidence of high salary, like you really went through uh, listing everything and uh, these are so very, very important uh, for us. This is really, really uh, amazing. I, I just want to bring on board uh, one of our resource persons that I introduced earlier and currently on the call. Uh, it's so important for me to introduce to you all at this material time. Uh, the co-founder and CEO of Vesti, uh, Mr. Olushola Amuson, to also, you know, give some insight and, of course, perhaps share some of his personal stories about even how he moved abroad and how he's uh, leveraging uh, these uh, uh, visa type uh, to, you know, do amazing work and, you know, as an high achieving professional himself. Uh, Mr. Olushola Amuson, please, you have the floor. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the session today. Incredible work just done by Ms. Bumi uh, Padoin. And thank you, Ife, uh, for coordinating this. Um, special thanks to Ms. Uh, Alex Boy and, of course, um, uh, Mr. Bola Lawal. Uh, thanks to everyone from Premier BN uh, who's been part of this session today. Um, I just want to, you know, highlight one thing that is really crucial. These programs are here today. No one knows where they will be tomorrow. The U.S. government is doing these programs today because they need these special talents in the United States. And like every program, these programs go in line with immigration policy. With a new government change coming, administration change coming in a couple of months, election is in November, you're not certain whether these programs will continue to deliver green cards, whether they will continue to deliver work permits. And that is why you want to take action as quickly as possible. I just saw a question in the chat. Do you guys write proposal and divorce? Yes, we do. We do not independently write proposal and divorce. Like we write proposal and divorce as part of uh, the entire EB2 and IW engagement, which is a national interest with our green card. Um, so right now, your best choice is to work with ST, and um, we're super excited because we've curated all kinds of support plans, all kinds of installment plans that are available for people in uh, Premier BN, and of course, um, as a member organization ourselves, we really think that this is something that would expand your global potential, 
and the work that you are trying to do. So one more time, without much ado, I want to say thank you to everybody who has been able to attend and everybody who has been able to speak and provide insights. Uh, I just wanted to quickly pop in and say thank you guys for, for joining. And of course, if you got, still have any questions, I'll be in the chat to be able to um, sort of, you know, you know, answer. Of course, my colleagues are here very capable of doing that, but I'm here just in the chat as well. And feel free uh, to reach out when necessary, even on the Premier Group as well. You can cyber with me um, as, as far as it's concerned. Once again, convener, thank you so much. And um, back to you, Oife. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Lushala, for that. Uh, thank you so much uh, for also creating time to be with us on this uh, webinar. I just want to uh, bring on board uh, Mr. Bola Lawal to also, you know, tell us. Uh, it, it's interesting to see that uh, conversations have been tailored towards, you know, how high achieving professionals can leverage some international opportunities. And that's why a company like Vesti is, you know, engaging this conversation, driving it, being at the forefront to ensure that uh, our funders are entrepreneurs in this part of the world, in the African startup ecosystem, are not left behind. And they are also able to play in the big leagues with our big guys in San Francisco in Silicon Valley doing amazing work. Uh, the question I want to ask you is, how can high achieving professionals, you know, leverage professional networks this case, like the Premier Business Network, you know, and even industry connections to enhance their immigration prospects. Hello, Mr. Bolalawa, please. Okay, so I think I'm going to come back to uh, Mr. Abola Lawal uh, for that particular question uh, in a moment. Uh, but let me just uh, go back uh, to Ms. Olubumi Opadui, who has just given us uh, like a breakdown of the key steps that we could take about, uh, about how to start this process, essentially. Uh, the next question I would like to ask her is, uh, what what are the most important factors to consider when choosing a visa or green card option that best suits uh, one's professional goals and aspirations? Uh, Mr. Lugu, we are doing. Right. Thank you so much for that question. So um, when considering, you know, a visa type or a green card, there are several factors you need to consider. Um, one of the first things you want to know is... Um, how fast do you want this? Let me, I'm going to be very, very honest here. How fast do you want this? Because if once I start listing all of the factors, a lot of people will be like, okay, why don't I go for this? Why don't I go for that? When you have, um, you know, several options that we have, you've seen people meet all of these options, but they want it and it depends on the, the timeline of each of those processes. So when you're considering this, the first thing you want to look at, you look at your professional field. What particular industry do you belong to? When you look at the industry you belong to, the second thing is please determine your eligibility again. After determining your eligibility, looking at the criteria, how many of these do you readily meet? right now that when 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 we are at, when you are asked to provide evidence for this right now how many of these do you readily meet okay i am able to meet about two or, or three I, I feel if i work within you know this number of weeks i will be able to provide this particular um evidences again then the the other thing you want to look at aside to your professional field is look at your career progression you know, how often, if you're considering the EB2 NIW, for example, you need to look at the industries, the fields you work over time. How are you able to merge this together? There are people that, you know, they've been in law for a number of years before they branched out into real estate. Why that might qualify, you know, for an EB1 green card, it might not, you know, be a suitable one for the EB2 NIW. So you want to look at your career progression as well. And then number number two, you look at your qualification and experience. We have a lot of people who have, you know, 25 years, 10, 8, 6, 15 years work of experience, and they have, you know, advanced degree. If you have this, then you know that, of course, you readily meet the EB2 and IW. But if you have a lot more extraordinary ability and outstanding achievements, you know that you are a better suit for the EB1 green card. 
So qualifications, experience, and education level also help you. Sorry, Bumi, is it me or, or I can't see your video? I think it's, it's the network. It keeps going on and off, sir. I'm going to try again. All right. Uh, thank you, Bumi. Uh, please, while we're trying to get that fixed up, uh, I don't know if Mr. Bolalawa is back here uh, on the call, uh, just like I asked. Yeah, I'm back. How's it going? I'm back. Sorry. Oh, nice, nice. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So I was asking earlier, like, it's amazing uh, to see, uh, you know, professionals, you know, getting uh, exposed to opportunities. Like, uh, we're talking about green cards, we're talking about work permits. And uh, it's good to see PBN as a frontliner driving this conversation amongst members at this material time. Uh, I was, I was going to ask, how can high achieving professionals, you know, leverage their professional network? In this case, now the PBN, how can they continue to leverage such platforms uh, and even industry connections to enhance uh, their immigration prospects? I think, um, can you see me? Yes, please, I can. Thanks. All right, so what I'll say first is it, with everything, it, it's exposure. And so number one, so for, some people may not even know that this opportunity exists because they don't have the exposure. Then I'm sure you've seen really talented people, good, maybe graduate degrees locally, they've not traveled, but good degrees, good jobs, good career progression. But in their mind, they've not even had the opportunity to even think that it's possible for them to say, oh, I can live in the US, I can live in, in the UK, I can live in Canada, and I can not just live there, but do the work I'm currently doing as a professional there too. Um, so, so, so a lot of times, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm on my bed. Uh, a lot of times, um, it starts with exposure and what a community or a network can do is to help you with exposure. The other thing, because now we are in an age where everything is all digital and with remote, uh, it has also, you know, the COVID, COVID allowed us to connect and integrate and, 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 and build relationships virtually. So you could be in Lagos, Abuja and have friends, uh, or even colleagues, if you work remotely with global companies in different parts of the world. And what that does is, one, because talented people naturally should be or are uh, upwardly mobile. So when you belong to a network and you're in a network, you leverage that network by exposing yourself to as much as you can and tapping into opportunities that you've been exposed to. So if you're in PBN now, you're hearing about, or maybe, or maybe you visited somewhere and you're like, oh, I would, love, I would love to live here. How do I migrate here? Or you just hear about how things are happening in other places and it picks your interest, kind of line of work that you want to do. You hear about it. Like, okay, how can I tap into this? That's one. Number two is even getting you prepped and qualified for all these opportunities. You can leverage the network. I personally... I've signed at least 30 letters of recommendation for people applying through this process, if not more than 30. We, we do this for UK, for US, once you're a, a community member. So, you know, there, there may be cases where you also may be uh, needing finance or, you know, you may not have been able to afford some of these services upfront and you can tap into your community to assist you, to help you. So just a lot of, it, it helps build capacity. So I'll just leave two things, capacity and exposure. Because if you hear the things people have lost out of or missed out on because of lack of exposure, and that's one of my life's work is to ensure that anyone around me doesn't get passed up uh, or left behind because they were not exposed. And that's the, one of the key things you can take out of a community you may not be the most uh chatty person or you may not be the most courageous or extroverted or anything 
at least you have ears and you can listen. You have eyes and you can see. And nobody is going to force you. Hey, why are you saying too much? Or why are you looking too much? Or why are you listening too much? Have you ever heard anyone say, why are you listening too much? It's They can say, well, why do you talk too much? Or you talk too much or you're disruptive. But nobody will hold you from listening or observing or, or looking. And so that's another thing that the community can help you with. And just build your confidence. Well, okay, so the third thing, thing capacity, uh, builds your confidence. I can't remember the second thing I said. Exposure. Exposure. So, see, that lack of exposure thing, man. For example, let me give you an example of what I mean by lack of exposure. Um, oh. This whole thing about South Africa and Nigeria, where people in South Africa were booking boats in, in Nigeria. And Nigeria has returned the favor, right? Thinking they're hurting South Africans. If you're exposed and you've traveled around the world, you understand that in South Africa, it's um, immigrants that drive Uber or boats. So while you may be booking those rides and you think you're frustrating uh, a South African, it might be a Nigerian Uber driver that you're frustrating or a Zimbabwean. A lot of Zimbabweans uh, do... Uh, um, right healing there so that's just a simple example but some people are like ah some of myself i study actual science joe um it's it's not it's it, i won't be able to go i won't find work if you understood the dynamics or, or the landscape of actual science you realize only few people in the world do it or even pass the professional exam and then you know that okay i, I just need to get my professional qualifications I need to find my part, uh, a, a company that I can partner with that will help me follow this a company like Vesti, and boom, you've got you you've traveled and then you're thriving in this in the country. It's not hard, which is also which also make it's not easy. Sorry, it also makes the work um, Vesti does amazing because they will help you settle in uh, aside of getting you there. So again, capacity, exposure. Uh, confidence those three things are very 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 key and you can leverage off of those by uh, being part of a thriving community yeah thank you so much in fact you've answered the next question i will have asked you uh that was quite uh direct thank you so much i can see a lot of questions in the chat box i want to assure you that i will get right to those questions and you get clarifications uh in respect to those questions i just want to uh, checking with uh, Mr. Lushola Amuson right now uh, to answer my next question, which is, you know, we're talking about saving time, saving money. And this is very, very important. This, and like you mentioned earlier, that this is so very, very time sensitive because of the political climate right now, particularly in the United States of America. So uh, the question I would like to ask uh, Mr. Lushola Amuson is, how can professionals on this call or those who will be listening to this recording much later, later, on, how can they streamline the application process to save time leveraging Vesti services? Hello, Mr. Lushala. Okay, uh, Bumi, are you there now? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, so, uh, okay. yeah, I would just like if you can take that uh, question that I just asked. Sorry, was your question? Yes, how can professionals streamline the application process, you know, to save time? We're talking about saving time and saving money. So how do we how do we on this call and those who will be listening to us much later, you know, save time and save money leveraging uh, the services here at Vesti? Okay. All right. So you can save time and save money by getting started now. Getting started immediately. How do you do that? We have um, we implemented a particular platform on the Vesti app where you can begin to upload your, um, your documents 
even without paying anything. The first thing you need to do is get on the clarity call. The clarity call is a paid session, yes, and it helps to to decide how you are how you're qualified for this particular process. You discuss with an attorney, an associate who will take you through the entire process, be it the O1, the EB1, the EB2, and IW. And even if you don't know what pathway for you at all, you want to know about all of the pathways to decide which um, to make an informative decision. Then there is also a call we call the general clarity call after which you can come on the visa type that suits you. Immediately you do this, um, you can begin, you can go on the Vestia, which is the freevesti.com, and you go to the visa requirements. Once you, you click on your particular visa type, you can begin to upload your documents. Now, if you want, that doesn't mean that you have been onboarded or anything. You just have access to the dashboard. However, you can save money by getting started small, small. You make an initial deposit of maybe 20% to 10% of um, the entire amount you're asked to pay. That allows you, you know, access to some templates. You begin to, you know, guide the templates that begin to um, help you to upload um, relevant documents that you need. Now, once you start to um, upload all of those documents, you don't get to meet the legal team until you make an initial deposit of 50%. Once the initial 50% um, deposit is reached, then you can meet with the legal team. You get onboarded and you will be assigned to a case officer who begins um, you know, to guide you along the process until you 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 submit the final document that is the final verified document then a worthy petition will be written before this petition is written your balance is required after which you give um the the legal team um a period of time to write a worthy petition which they would send to you as well to have a third look before this is submitted. Now, how else do you save? Do you save time and money? We also have a savings platform. If you know that you have this as a goal in the next six months, in the next three months, you want to get started, you can also make use of the savings platform. Guys, I can also, um, I want to start saving this. We had a client a particular time who, who stated that he could really make it, um, a deposit of $1,500 and, um, once his initial deposit of 50% is rich, we can get started. At the time, we do not have the platform to say, okay, you can start uploading your document. Good thing we already have that, that you know, you already know the prerequisites, you already know the documents that are required of you, and you are already uploading. During his own time, all he needed to do was make this payment, and within a three-month period, he was onboarded with the legal team. But you also can also save in this particular amount. Okay, I can make a deposit of $2,000. You begin to upload all of your documents. How does that save time and money? Other than waiting until you make an initial deposit of 50% to meet the legal team, you already have access to this particular dashboard, to this particular file. You have started uploading your files yourself. So upon meeting with the legal team, all you will be doing on that call is reviewing. It's more like your first initial review of everything you've uploaded over time. And you already know what is left for you to upload. They also tell you how they're able to assess, okay, these are the worthy documents you've submitted and these are the other documents that will be required. That way you are not wasting a lot of time and money. All right, uh, Olubumi, thanks for that. Uh, I could see how you were able to walk us through that entire process, you know, from on the web app where they start to upload the documents to uh, how they start to pay small, small. I think that's the word there, like paying small, small, like you don't have to have all the money that you need for this service uh, before you start the process. So like you can intentionally start paying small, small and your uh, your keys will be attended to uh, as as the uh as the time goes on so i uh, thanks for walking us through that process i see a lot of questions there i want to also go to the questions now as we begin to wrap up uh the session uh the first question there says uh do you guys help write the proposed endeavor for the eb2 uh and also the 10k fee you charge is it plus the migration fees uh mr Lubumi, could you please help us with answers to that those questions Okay, great. So we do not write the proposed endeavor independent of the EB. 
to NIW battery. It comes as a part of the package. And the good thing about it is as aligned to your field, you will be guided with a template on how to provide an initial draft. With the initial draft, I can give you an example. I've sent a two-page draft down to about 69 pages of a proposed endeavor, a well-written proposed endeavor. Your initial draft is to also, you know, it helps guide the legal attorney to know that, okay, this is the angle, um, this is the topic that you're looking at, they write this, they write a worthy proposed endeavor. At the time that you get to see it, you'll also be impressed. So it is part of the entire package. We do not write this independent, but yes, we are able to assist with it. Also, the second question, the 10,000 fee charge, um, it consists of the filing forms, if that is what you mean, the government fees, the filing the, the, the filing forms and all of that, yes. However, if you mean migration fees, that is um, either the consular processing or the adjustment of status after approval, no, it is not part of it. Okay, yes, I, I can see that you answered that. So again, uh, we are not going to be the ones writing that for, uh, for you. Uh, uh, no, be no other be person better than to write your own, you know, what, what you have envisaged or what you are proposing to do and uh, what is of great national interest uh, to the U.S. and they will be able to take it on. Uh, that's what the, uh, the U.S. CIS wants to see. And uh, we'll be just be able to add value and guide you, tailor the assistance on uh, that particular uh, aspect of the application process. So uh, do we help write that? No. Uh, and uh, she already answered the other question. Hello, please, what's the estimated processing timeline from application to approval? Uh, Abumi, could you please help with that? Okay, so this is a very tricky question. Um, we can only give the estimated timeline, like I said earlier. I'm only able to give you the estimated timeline from when you submit the final verified document. Now, the timeline it takes to gather your evidence, I am unable to estimate that. This is because, you know, a lot of people, you know, they have individual timelines. We belong to different fields, and I understand how busy the life of a professional is. So um, there, there are a lot of people that are more handsome with the process than the other. I, I used to give this example of a particular client of ours who was able to provide recommendation letters within the shortest possible time you can think about. And there are people who take as much as three months to provide just recommendation letters. So the document gathering stage, I am unable to provide a timeline. However, from the meaning to submit the final document, I am able to provide an estimated timeline for all of this. Now, the breakdown is immediately you submit the final verified document and your final deposit is confirmed. You need to give um, the legal attorney ample time to actually put forward um, the worthy petition. This is about three to four weeks. This timeline will be discussed with you because there are also um, the waiting line. So it depends on how um, the waiting line is at the moment. So you, they will give you a timeline which doesn't exceed anything three to four weeks. They will tell you when the petition will be ready for you to have a final look over to make the final maybe corrections to name or uh, this particular, uh, maybe my spouse was included. I have this number of children. You need to also help include this. You have the final look over and correction, then the petition filing. Now, from the petition filing stage, till you get a response. It depends on which particular visa type. If you're going for the O1 visa, you have an estimated three to nine months. If you're going for either the EB1, um, the EB2 NIW, you have an estimated 10 to 15 months to get a response. However, you can get a response within three to about 45 working days if you um, apply for the premium processing. The premium processing has its own charge and goes to the USDIS, allows you to get the response within three to 45 working days. So after you get your um, to, you get your response, most cases, according to our 99.6% success rate, you're able to um, you know if you're going for the consular processing or you will be adjusting your status within the United States. So that's the timeline. Yes. Uh could you please uh, post those relevant links in the chat box, um, Mr. Lubumi? Like, uh, if there's somebody on this corner that wants to take advantage of the, like the EB1, the EB2 NIW, or even the O1 visa, the work permits, uh, they would like to like take action immediately. It's nice if we have 
uh, the links, you know, shared in the chat box so that people can begin to engage and, uh, you know, take the necessary steps uh, towards uh, making that dream uh, a reality in no distant time. Thank you so much. You've been quite uh, valuable for us on this session and very amazing insights that you've shared so far. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody with questions. Uh, this is a good time for you uh, to please put a question in the chat box. Uh, we are super, super excited to answer any of those questions right now. But it's important that you know that part of our process here is that uh, you need to just uh, book a clarity call where you're able to have like a personalized session with our immigration lawyers and they're able to hand hold you through every of this process essentially. Uh, so we want to encourage you to please uh, book a clarity session uh, with our immigration lawyers and uh, they walk you through the entire process in and let you know what you know the entire process looks like so you're able to make an informed decision whether or not to proceed uh, with this uh, with any of the pathways that we're talking about. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking about how you can save money and save time with green cards and work permits as high achieving professional and it's been a wonderful time you know listening to Mr. Lubumi Opadoi at some point uh, Mr. Lushala Muson and uh, Mr. Bola Lawa you know share insight and of course talk about the collaboration ongoing with Investi and the Premier Business Network and uh, uh, it's been an amazing time uh, I don't know if we still have any okay thank you so much um, uh, Eunice Adu Guam Fee uh, you're asking, can you also elaborate on the payment plan again? Thank you so much. Uh, that will be done. Uh, Mr. Lubumi, could you please give some uh, elaborate uh, uh, clarification on the payment plan that we're talking about? Remember, we talked about the fact that it could pay small, small. Uh, so I'm sure she's also asking questions in, this, in respect to this. So please give some light to that. Just before, just before Bumi uh, put some light on that, I want to talk about one perspective that is really important. So these processes or this route is one of the routes that doesn't require proof of fund. It's one of the routes that doesn't require proof of fund. It's one of the routes that you can be sure that whatever you pay for one person covers your entire family. It covers your spouse, covers like your kids. So it's almost like you're paying 10000 for a process that covers your spouse and also covers your kids. If you divide it over the four of them or three of them, depending on your family size, it brings the amount to a very small amount. So when you put that in perspective, you will see that it's cheaper than education. You will see that it's cheaper than um, even countries like the UK. Um, it's cheaper than, of course, we also have programs for the UK, but it's cheaper than most of those other migration pathways that cost you a lot of money. And in terms of return on investment, considering that you are going for a green card, which is a permanent residency card in America, where your earning potential increases significantly, it's really a massive investment. Um, but on the on the payment plan, I'll let me just go on and, and, and do that. All right. Thank you so much, sir. So um, for the payment plan, I initially mentioned an initial start point of 10%, where you're able to make 10% of your entire invoice. And what that guarantees you is access to the dashboard to start uploading your documents. It doesn't give you access to the link thing you do not get onboarded until you make an initial deposit of 50 percent and i also mentioned that if you're able to we appreciate people paying in full and we also appreciate people paying the initial 50 percent but relating with um the, the finance right now, the, the economy in Nigeria or across the world. We understand that people want to get started with this process. However, sometimes finance can be an issue. So, of course, you can get started with a 10%. And if you have the initial 50% that gets you onboarded with the legal team, of course, that can also be done. And um, the, the difference between the two is 10% gets you access to the dashboard to begin uploading your documents while you meet the initial um, 50%. Well, the 50% um, gets you onboarded with the legal team and assigned to a case officer. This case officer is able to, you know, over time, review all of the uploads you have made and also, you know, make advices provide templates where necessary and also a support. Also, you can start savings. That there's something we call a savings plan on Vesti where you have a wallet that you can save a, a particular amount, maybe on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis towards this particular migration goal. So this is the payment plans again. Yes, uh, thank you for that, uh, Mr. Lubu. 
to me for giving clarity on that payment plan. And of course, I'm happy that uh, we are also able to, you know, put it to, put into consideration the economic realities in this part of the world. And uh, there are a lot of people that are excited about starting this process. But of course, we also have to, you know, put the reality of the time into perspective. And it's good to see that Vesti is conscious of that and has make it very, made it very seamless for people to actually be able to pay small, small to start the process towards the completion of this particular pathway. And of course, uh, getting uh, the, the, the necessary output or uh, why they are uh, going on this pathway, essentially. Uh, we're coming to the end of this webinar this evening. Uh, I'm sure it's been a wonderful time. I could see uh, this is more like uh, this. This is more like another uh, clarity session, uh, like giving us insight about what these old green card and work permits are, are all about. And you have first hand information about it. It's, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Lubumi, for even sharing those links in the chat box. We want to encourage you to please take action. Uh, it doesn't end on this webinar. Yeah, we require you to you know, take the next step of you know, engaging with us. Uh, book that clarity session and have a session with our immigration lawyer to start the process. Uh, if you have any concerns that you want to be addressed, uh, you can send us an email at talentvisa, talentvisa at weversity.com. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be assured that we'll, we'll you know, get on board and uh, you know get to answer your questions, personalized questions. Uh, but we want to encourage you to please book clarity session with those links that have been shared in the chat box. And for more inquiries, you can send an email to talentvisa at wevesti.com. Uh, I just want to allow uh, my key speakers for today to give their final words uh, as we bring this session to a close. It's been a wonderful time, you know, uh, hosting this session. Uh, Mr. Lubumi, do you want to say some final words to our listening audience? Um, I just want to say that in light of, you know, the ever-changing policies by the hour and by the day, you, the best time to get started will be right now if not yesterday, and you don't know, you know, you don't know what the policies might be. This opportunity is here right now, like the CEO once said, and you don't know if it will be scrapped with the incoming government. You just want to make sure you make use of this. And as Mr. Bolalawal also mentioned, expose your, your confidence. You also want to make sure that you're on the global passport, creating a lot more opportunities for yourself than where you are right now. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Lubumi. Uh, Mr. Lushala Muso, please, you have the floor. Yeah, just like I said, um, we we are committed to this. The partnership is uh, an ongoing partnership. Our goal will be to help as much as a thousand people who are very talented in the Premier Network to get access to these global opportunities. And we'll keep curating ways to make it easier if you want to explore more, you can just create an account on wevesti.com, you know, and see what the dashboard looks like, what the EB2 visa requirements looks like, the EB1 requirement visa looks like. Um, don't worry too much about the acronyms. That's why we're here. We're a personal concierge to enable you, you know, get all the help that you will need at the end of the day. Um, also, don't let finance be a blocker. That's why we've created uh, and glove and correct sync between migration and finance. You know, so we have lending services, we have pay small, small, we have savings services, all of that just to make it a lot easier. And there are tons of testimonials on people who have leveraged all of these products to be able to achieve their goal ultimately in terms of migration. So yeah, we're super excited uh, to onboard you and to get started with you. Um, and um, let us just be uh, the difference between, you know, you know, getting it, getting it right and getting it, you know, wrong and wasting money like some people have done. People usually, some people usually get it botched. Then they come back and say, well, can I get help? Can you help me with an RFE? Which is a request for more evidence or can you help me with this, with this appeal? It's always better to get it right from the beginning, work with the right organization. And, you know, if you're a premium already, this should come as a, you know, at no surprise to you that because there's a lot of, high flyers within the group and if you're not a premier yet this is your chance to like get on board and be able to see many other opportunities beyond even this one you know uh so thank you guys appreciate you for bringing this on and thanks for everyone who has stayed thanks to everyone who has stayed till the end and those who will watch this recording afterwards as well
Thank you. Thank you. Amazing opportunities the Premier Business Network is sharing with its members and Vesti is super proud to be a part of this. I just want to give uh, Mr. Bola Lawa opportunity to give us uh, his final words. I can also see Alero on the call. Uh, if Mr. Uh, Bola Lawa isn't here, uh, we could just have the final words from either Mr. Bola Lawa or Alero. Okay, uh, without wasting much of our time, ladies and gentlemen, I want to really appreciate us uh, for joining us for this session. It's been a wonderful time, you know, you know, sharing this insights with us. Please, I want to encourage us to please take the next step, book the clarity session, uh, take advantage of our lending services, take advantage of our migration savings account, take advantage of the pay small, small uh, opportunity right here uh, that we are offering members of the Premier Business Network. I'm super excited about this collaboration between Vesti and the PBN. And I'm optimistic about, you know, the opportunities that we come uh, as, uh, you know, as an offshoot of this uh, uh, foundation that we've set between the two organizations. Once again, it's been a wonderful time, a wonderful privilege, you know, hosting this session with you and, uh, you know, sharing this insight alongside my colleague, Olubumi uh, Olushola Amuson, uh, sharing this uh, vision and sharing these services and products that we have here at Vesti. Thank you. Thank you so much for the time we've had on this call. It's been a wonderful time. And this is me signing out. See you next on our next webinar. Uh, if you want to watch a recording to this session, please, you can do that on the Vesti app YouTube page. So just go to the YouTube page, you search for Vesti app, you're able to watch the recording of this session. Till we meet again on another session, it's goodbye from here. My name is Ifeolua Ariyo Hagbaji. Thank you very much.